Hey Andy, it's Ryan over at Two Minute Tennis. I'm super excited to help you with your serve. I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison of your serve versus mine, and then we're gonna come back on court and I'm gonna show you all the drills you can do and all the changes you can make to improve your serve. All right, let's get to it. So Andy, let's go over what you do really well first. And you do a lot well. Uh, just from having your weight on your front foot to rocking back, and then rocking forward again and falling into the court just for an athletic movement of the body. I really like your down together, up together motion where you lead slightly with the tossing arm. That's what Federer does. I love how your toss stays to the right of your head. You can see you're contacting to the right of your head. That's great. I mean, your contact point uh, from, you know, from left to right is awesome. I love before that though, how the racket comes up with its edge with your strings facing off to the left, that's called supinated, and then you pronate, and your palms facing off to the right, your strings are facing off to the right. That's a great way to fire the racket into the ball to gain a, a lot of racket speed. I really like, if you look, your ball curves. I know you missed wide here, but that doesn't matter. I want you to notice how your ball curves. You got beautiful side spin. Not a lot of club and recreational players hit side spin. They always think super flat and then top spin. Everyone asks me, how do you hit top spin serves? And how do you hit flat serves? No one ever asked me, how do you hit slice serves? If there's one serve to learn, it's the slice serve. Uh, so that's fantastic. And then you tuck your left arm against your body. That'll be easier to see from the side view. You follow through on your left side. There is so much you're doing right. Um, but I want to help you swing faster. I want you to be able to hit the ball faster, but also make the ball spin faster. So if you do go for the slice or a topspin serve, then you have more racket speed and then it, you're going to get a lot more action on the ball. So the first thing is whenever I look at somebody's swing, I always go through the order of grip body swing. And so I always look at their grip and then I look at their body position and then I look at their swing. See, the swing is built on the foundation of the grip and body. So it's always grip and body. So if you are trying to work on your overhead or your backhand volley or your slice backhand or your forehand, whenever you're working on your on your game and you're like, "Man, what is going on with my shot? It's not it's not going the way I want it." <laughs> you know, always address the grip first. And maybe your grip is right, you know, and you'll just check it and go, "Okay, good. The grip is right." And then Think about body position, you know, on, a, on, a, on an overhead. Are you turning sideways or even past sideways a little bit? Like things like that. You want to get the grip and the body right. And from there, then you can start to work on the swing. So I want to address your grip first because it's, oops, it's a little grainy, the video, when I blow it up. But we're going we're gonna to look for something here. When I saw the beginning of your serve... And I saw that you start way out in front like this, with this angle between your arm and the racket. I knew that, or I, I am <laughs> highly suspecting that your grip is a little off. And just because if you, if when I recreate this position with my hand and my racket, my arm, it's nearly impossible to have the correct grip. And it puts, and I'll show this on court, it puts the heel pad way too high up on the racket. And whenever I see this, I always figure, okay, they're most likely going to have to change their grip at some time in, later on in the swing. And I want you to see, after you go across your feet, right, I'm going to zoom in here, right there. So to me, this looks like a refingering see that right there? Those look like your fingers sticking out. So it's it's like you get into there, your hand starts to refinger and you're refingering the grip. To me, it looks like you're refingering. Again, it's very, um, it's very grainy, but I'm using this starting position to let me know that you, you're getting side spin on the serve. You have a good grip. You have, you know, relatively close to a continental grip, if not a continental grip, where your knuckle and your heel pad are on bevel number two. And again, I'll show you what that is on court. But it's nearly impossible to have that correct grip in the position you're in. And so I'm 
truly believing you are refingering the grip right here. So what I'm going to ask you to do is not start the way you're starting, but to start the way I'm starting. Look where I'm starting. See how the tip of my racket is pointing forward? I mean, if, if you think about this, I am serving to the deuce box, and the tip of my racket is pointing to the right of the deuce box. Here's my target, and the tip of my racket is pointing to the right of it. You're serving to the ad court, and the tip of your racket is pointing way off to the left of your target. And so, it's again, it's nearly impossible to have the correct grip with that starting position. So I want you to start with your hand lower. So I want you to, to lower your hand the way mine is. I mean, you can see where my hand is. It's kind of around hip level, where yours, you know, is about chest level. And my hand is much closer to me and yours is far away. So I'm going to ask you to have your beginning position much more relaxed and much closer to you with the tip of the racket pointing to the right of your target. I don't want you starting in this position because I'm, I'm really <laughs> suspicious of, that, of this position right here. Again, what I showed you right there. This is a very common place in the swing that people refinger their grip. And you don't know you're doing it. It's, it's automatic. It's subconscious. So I want you to change your starting position so that there's no need to change the grip later on in the swing. So the next idea is, and, and by the way, there are seven checkpoints on the serve. Let me actually go through these checkpoints. Um, so the first checkpoint is the ready position. And I'll, I'll go through it, and then I'll go through each one. I'm going to use me as the, as the uh, example here. So this is checkpoint one on the serve. This is checkpoint two. This is checkpoint three. This is checkpoint four. This is checkpoint five, checkpoint six, and checkpoint seven. And so checkpoint one is what we've already talked about. Checkpoint two is after you go across your feet, your strings should point down. You can see my strings are pointing down. Now again, I'm going to go step by step through here. My strings are facing down. My elbow is pointing back. The tip of my racket is pointing over. That's checkpoint two. That's You look at Federer hit a serve. This is what he looks like. Checkpoint three is knocking off a birthday hat, right? So I am going to ask you to go out and buy a birthday hat. You're going to knock it off during the serve. But checkpoint three is checkpoint three is what's commonly called the trophy position. But I'm going to show you how you and I get into the trophy position in completely different ways. And I'm going to show you why my way of getting into the trophy position, why the Djokovic way, why the Gilmont Fies way, why the Kyrgios way, um, why the Federer way of getting into the trophy position helps you swing so much faster. So this is the uh, knock off the birthday hat position. Checkpoint four is the racket should come around on edge. So it looks like I'm going to hit the ball with the edge of the racket. I already talked about that with you. That's great. Checkpoint five is pronating to hit into the back of the ball. Checkpoint six is continuing to pronate with your strings facing off to the right. And then checkpoint seven is, you can see I'm tucking my left arm against my body just like you have it. And then checkpoint seven is a follow through off your left side. So we're, I'm just going, when I, whenever I, uh, look at somebody's stroke, I just go through the checkpoints. I literally just start in checkpoint one and I scroll through your video trying to find the checkpoints. And you're missing checkpoints two and three, which are really the power positions of the, of the serve. So we talked about checkpoint one, which is the ready position. But here's checkpoint two for me. I, I go across my feet and then I lift my arm up and my strings face down, you can see the tip of my racket where it's pointing. It's pointing off to the right of the camera. I want you to look at your checkpoint too. So you can see how, how different we look. The tip of my racket is pointing off to the right. My strings are facing down and my elbow is pointing back. In your checkpoint too, you have your elbow pointing down where mine's pointing back. You have your strings pointing over when mine are pointing down and the tip of your racket is pointing kind of toward the back fence. I guess we could say this is kind of your, I'll say this is your uh, checkpoint too. So elbows down, strings are over and the tip of your racket is really pointing back at the fence. 
behind you, where again, strings are down, tip is over, elbow is back. So my position is, is really going to get you to be able to swing much faster. I'm in the football throwing position. If you look at a quarterback, a quarterback, when they're going to throw a football, their arm is in this position. The elbow's back, their palm is down, and then they go into their throwing motion. You do kind of a bicep curl. And I'll, I'll show you here. Watch how you just kind of bend your elbow like you're doing a bicep curl. And the way you get into checkpoint three, which is what is called the trophy position, and I don't call it the trophy position because I don't, I don't like the, calling it a trophy position because it doesn't teach the student how to get into it. What it does is it just tells you where to go. Well, how you get there is, is, more, is, is just as important, and I would say it's more important to, to worry about than where you go. And I want you to notice I get into that same position so like you can, you could look at us right now and you could say, oh, wow, we look quite similar, right? We look very similar, but how we got there was completely different. Let me explain. So my racket does not go back across my feet and then go like this. My racket goes across my feet. It goes across my feet, but then comes back in and comes in over my head. Watch it follow that line. See that? I go across my feet and then my racket comes from in front of my head to behind my head. So my racket right now is in front of my head and it's going to go back here in front to behind. This is what Federer does. This is what Djokovic does. This is what Gail Monfils does. They make this move from here to here, from in front to back. And you can see my elbow and my racket are switching positions, right? So my elbow, uh, let me make it a different color. My elbow is over by the white circle and the tip of my racket is by the blue circle. And then watch, they switch. See, they switch. So that's the throwing motion. Your body rotates, your elbow comes forward. And that's just a real power move. If I were to draw that on you, it's, I go like this, and then I bring the racket back in and knock off the birthday hat. That's really the shape of the, of the racket in the air. If the racket could sky right, that's the move it should make. I want to show you how you do this. And so we are getting to the same place. We're both getting here but it's how we get there. Because look at the direction your racket's going. Yes, we're going the same direct, we're getting to the same place, but your racket's going this way to get there. My racket's going this way. So it's a completely different movement. And mine is a true throwing motion. It's why I'm gonna be able to serve faster than you. I, I'm not taller than you. I'm, I'm five foot eight, so I'm not, I'm like, probably Diego Schwartzman's height, or maybe I'm an inch taller. I don't know. Like I, I'm not super tall, obviously. I'm only five foot eight, but I can, you know, I can easily hit a hundred mile an hour serve. And it's not about, um, it's not about strength and it's not about height. It's about technique. And so what we're going to have to do is after we go across your feet, we're going to have to make sure at this point right here that your strings are pointing down like I have. And that then we knock off a birthday hat and we make this move. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to show you drills I want you to do. I'm going to ask you that when your racket's here, your strings are pointing down and that the racket comes back in over the head and knocks off a birthday hat. So you must go out and buy a birthday hat. Now, here's the interesting thing. You and I become very similar from this point. And that's what's so exciting because so many players, the beginning of the serve looks great and then it just breaks down from there. Your serve, it really cleans itself up. Um, you'll see how the racket is to the right of my hand. See this? Here's my hand, tip of my racket. See how it's angled this way? Where I know it's a different angle for you because you're hitting to the ad side, but it's still, it's still going to be angled this way. See how your racket's angled that way? My racket, 
like you're like this. The tip of your racket's here. The reason mine is flying over here is centripetal force, right? So it's like, you know, like think about a car turning, um, it, you know, around a corner. So this force, it's the racket's wanting to go in a straight line, right? And so it's actually throwing the racket to the right of my hand because I'm swinging faster. So this position that you have where the racket is to the inside of your hand, if I just draw a line from your hand, your racket is to the inside of it. If I draw that same line through my hand, my racket is slightly to the outside of it. Now Isner, because he swings faster, his racket gets all the way over there. I am not John Isner and I cannot swing as fast as he can. So that's why the reduced amount of centripetal force throwing the racket off to the right. But once we start getting you into that strings pointing down position in the back, like we talked about, once I get you into this position and then knocking off the birthday hat, you're going to be able to swing faster and you're going to notice that the racket actually flies off to the right of your hand. The racket flying off to the right of your hand is not a move you should make. It is just a byproduct of extra racket speed. You don't want to actually do it on purpose. But then you'll notice into the back of the ball, notice we both have our strings facing off to the right. My strings are facing off to the right. Your strings are facing off to the right. We both fall into the court. I mean, dude, like your swing looks awesome from this point right from right here. Your swing becomes better than 95% of tennis players I see who send me videos. I mean, your swing looks really, really good. The problem is you missed all the power potential from checkpoints two and checkpoints three, or checkpoint two and checkpoint three. So let's look at it from the side view and it's gonna be a little easier to see maybe the tossing position. I love your toss again, it's off to the right of you, um, but we're gonna be able to see where it is. We're gonna be able to see um, you're you tucking your left arm the way you should. So let's check out the side view and then I'm gonna go on court and show you everything I want you to do to speed up your serve. Now, I like to show the side view because we can see different things. And the first thing I wanna show you, yes, you can see how much higher your racket is and your hand really, your hitting hand. Um, so it's what I showed you before. We wanna drop that, that ready position, get the tip of the racket pointing to the right of your target and have your arms just closer to you. And I also want you to look at your feet. So just looking at your feet, I want you to start with your feet a little closer. I don't want you to have your feet so far apart. Um, just looking at the way you swing and the, looking at your lack of knee bend, I think you're gonna have an easier time if we just bring your right foot the littlest bit in. You can see how my feet are closer than yours. So. I want you to have your feet slightly closer and then you'll be more willing to use better knee bend. So let's move your right foot up a little bit. Again, that's why I like to show both sides because then you can actually see. When I give lessons, I look at the serve from the side view and the back view um, because you can see different things from each position. Uh, so this is great. So I want you to start with your feet the littlest bit closer. Same relationship to each other. Just move that right foot a little bit closer. I think you're going to find it much easier to start engaging the legs. I don't want you to worry so much about the legs right now um, because we have some much more important things to accomplish with the swing. But I want to set the stage for later on you being able to work on the legs. But please do not think, oh, he wants me to bend my knees a lot. No, no, no. I want you working on checkpoint two and checkpoint three uh, in the swing. And I'm going to teach you all the checkpoints on the court. But uh, So when I go across my feet, just like you, right, you go across your feet as well. Now look, look how similar we are. I want you to notice when I lift my racket up. So this is checkpoint one. That's the ready position. Checkpoint two is right here. Now notice, the tip of my racket, it never points at the back fence. Back fence meaning like this way, behind me, behind the tennis court I'm on. The tip of my racket is basically pointing right now at the camera and the strings are pointing down. So I'm going across my feet and my strings now are pointing down. Strings are down. My elbow is pointing kind of at that fence back there behind me. 
The tip of my racket is pointing at the camera. It's what we had talked about. Notice I can't get you into that position. So you can see the tip of your racket is pointing at the fence behind you and your strings are not facing down. Palm down is what, again, what a quarterback does when they're about to throw a football, the, the foot, their hand is on top of the football and it helps the hand make a loop and a circle and, and develop a ton of speed. When you miss checkpoint two, anybody who misses checkpoint two, uh, it's nearly impossible to then get checkpoint three correct. Because when the palm is down, that's when the racket can pass in over the head. So you'll notice my strings are facing down. I mean, I could put a ball, let me make it yellow so it looks like a ball. I could put a ball in the throat of the racket. I could just place a ball in the throat of the racket. Obviously, with your racket, you can't place a ball in the throat. And then just look how the racket comes in over my head. So I'm passing the racket right in over the head. If I was wearing a birthday hat, see this, I'd be knocking off the birthday hat. And so I, I will demonstrate on the court for you, hitting a birthday hat off of my head. You see my contact points out in front of the court. You can see you've got the same thing. Look how far into the court you are. I mean, it's awesome. There's so much you're doing. Look how you're tucking your left arm against your body. Look how I'm tucking my left arm against the body. We're way inside the court. I mean, there is a lot that you're doing well. You're just starting too far away, which is forcing you to have to refinger your grip. And you're missing checkpoint two and checkpoint three. Remember, checkpoint one is the starting position, the ready position. Should be close, relaxed, continental grip, tip of the racket pointing to the right of your target. Checkpoint two is going across your feet and having the strings facing down and the tip of the racket pointing at the camera. Checkpoint three is knocking off a birthday hat. Checkpoint four is coming around on edge, looking like you know, you're going to hit the, the ball with the edge of the racket. Checkpoint uh, five is hitting into the back of the ball, which you do. Checkpoint six is pronating. Checkpoint seven is the follow through off to the left side. I would say that your toss is a little too high. I'm going to ask that you lower it. One, because of the rhythm. With this racket speed that I want to help you create, you're going to want to fire it. Like just imagine trying to jump, right? You're going to do a standing broad jump is well, you know, what I call it. So you're going to bend your knees and then jump, right? So your feet are next to each other and you're just going to see how far you can jump like a frog. You're going to bend your knees and go. Well, if you bend your knees and then hold your knees for a little bit and like hold your knee bend for a second or two and then jump, you're not going to be able to jump as far as when you just bend and then go. And so it isn't necessarily only what you do that you have to worry about. It's when you do it and the rhythm of it. And with the toss you have, it's not allowing the gears to shift ideally at the right cadence and at the right speed. You'll notice if I, um, if I uh, synchronize when the ball comes out of our hand, so here's the rack, the ball out of our hand at the same time. Now I'm going to synchronize the videos. I've already hit the ball. You can see we're starting. And look at this. I'm hitting the ball basically at the peak. Look how much faster I'm hitting the ball or sooner. I'm hitting the ball so much, so much faster. And you can see like we're, you know, I'm, we're bouncing the ball. We go into our motion, we both toss at the same time, and then boom, I hit the ball. And I'm already done with my serve. And then you're hitting. Your toss is extremely high. And so, for it's not extremely high. It's, it's too high for the new swing that's going to want to really fire at the ball. That, that position two and, and checkpoint two and checkpoint three. So... Dude, I'm excited for you because you check, you, you'll get checkpoint two and checkpoint three just by knocking off a birthday hat. And if we can lower your toss with that newer beginning, man, you're going to have a good serve. So I think realistically, uh, we should be um, adding five miles an hour on average to your serve in a month. 
And then ultimately six months from now, your average serve is 10 miles an hour faster. And that is, that seems like not a lot. It's tremendous to be able to, on average, serve 10 miles an hour faster. Um, so it's, it's huge. Anytime your opponent is barely on time, you serve 10 miles an hour faster, they're way late. And so that's a good thing. So, all right, I'll see you on court, and I'm going to show you, Andy, how to improve the speed of your serve. All right, Andy, so I'm super excited to help you. So the first thing we got to talk about is your grip, because the way you're setting up was forcing you to use an incorrect grip, and then you were changing your grip halfway through the swing to try to make the grip better. So let's make sure you know exactly how to hold the racket correctly. So on your hand, there are two spots we have to worry about. We gotta worry about the base knuckle of your index finger and the heel pad. There's a straight line drawn between those two places. Now, let's talk about the grip itself and then we'll talk about how to put the two together. So you just have to have your racket on its edge Anytime the racket's on its edge, then bevel number one is on top. It's an octagon. Each bevel is 45 degrees, 360 divided by eight. So it's really important, even if you're one bevel off, you're 45 degrees off in your racket face. That could cause havoc. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that as we're serving, the knuckle and heel pad, the line between our knuckle and heel pad is lined up on bevel number two. Now, if you're a lefty, this is bevel number two, but as a righty, this is bevel number two. Bevel one is on top, two, three. Since you're right-handed, you're gonna count clockwise. One, two, three. So bevel number two is kind of that 45 degree angle bevel on the top right. And what we wanna do is take that line and we wanna line it up on bevel number two. We're actually gonna take that line and place it from the butt of the racket up the grip. You'll notice if I open up my hand, you cannot see that line because it's on bevel number two. Many players hold on like this, the heel pad is exposed, and then the racket gets uh, easily shifts in their hand, which is actually how you begin. So it's gonna be important that we get the heel pad and the base knuckle of your index finger on bevel number two. That is called a continental grip. Now, when you begin, the first thing let's talk about is actually your feet when you walk up to the line, because that's actually gonna, gonna be what you set up first. So you're gonna set up your feet at the moment your feet are quite far apart. I'm gonna ask you that you actually have your feet closer together. I think it's gonna be easier for you actually to have a weight shift and actually use your legs properly. Many players, they either have their feet way too close or way too far apart. You're definitely someone who has their feet very far apart. I actually thought when I s started watching your serve that you were gonna do a pinpoint stance. Because you, you watch a lot of players, like you look um, Kyrgios and his feet are quite far apart and then his, his back foot comes up. You had your feet quite far apart and you kept them there and it got a little awkward when it was actually tougher to shift your weight forward. So I'm going to ask you to have your feet a little closer than you normally do and then it's actually going to be easier to use the lower body. Now when it comes to setting up to serve, you had the tip of your racket pointing to the left. We saw when I was setting up to serve, that the tip of my racket was pointing off to the right of my target. Now this is gonna be indicative of having actually the correct grip. When you were setting up, your heel pad, remember I talked about that, your heel pad was actually off the racket. Your hand was way away from you, tip of the racket pointing off to the left in this position, which set us up for many problems later on in the swing. One of them being you actually refingered your grip trying to find the grip later on. So we're gonna make sure that our heel pad and our base knuckle are on bevel number two, the continental grip. We're gonna start with the racket much closer to us rather than way out here. We're gonna start much closer to us and the tip of the racket, I want you pointing it slightly to the right of your target. Again, that's gonna help you create the, the best environment to have the right grip. All right, let me get some balls and I wanna talk about the first change we truly wanna make in the swing. Now, when you went across your feet, you made a very common mistake. You set up like this, and after you went across your feet, you actually, we saw you refinger your grip, but the tip of the racket pointed at the back fence. What I want you to do, and you're gonna have to practice this, is just do this drill, and you don't have to go to a tennis court to practice what we're about to do here. You can practice it, yes, on a court, but you can practice, practice at home. I want you to toss and just 
make this move. Notice my strings are facing down. My elbow is pointing back where you had your elbow down. The tip of my racket is pointing the direction of my chest. Remember, the tip of your racket was pointing up. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get into a throwing position, a position to actually make the proper throwing motion. You were getting into that, and I even called it like a bicep curl. The tip of your racket was pointing up and you were basically doing a bicep curl. This is not a throwing motion. You won't see somebody throwing a ball like this. They're in this position. You look at a quarterback, throw a football, their hand and elbow are leveled to each other as they go to throw the football. They're like this. They get in this position. They're not in this position. And so it's important that we have our strings facing down. I described it as you should be able to hold a ball in the throat of the racket. After you go across your feet, don't point the tip of your racket at the back fence. Go across your feet and then lift the racket up. Tip of the racket is now going to point off to the side, the same direction as your chest. The elbow is pointing the opposite direction rather than the elbow down and the tip of the racket up. Palm is facing down, strings are facing down. You can actually hold a ball in the throat of the racket. So this drill that I'm doing where nice and close, the tip of your racket is going to point slightly to the right of your target and you make this move, you're going to have to do this a lot because this is going to set us up for the birthday hat. You got to get into this position first. This move right here. So you have to toss. Don't catch it, by the way. Notice I'm not catching the ball. Don't catch the ball because then you're worried about the toss. We want to worry about the arm. We want to make sure that we're in this position. Players go to toss the ball. They do this drill and then they go, and they're like, oh, I didn't do it. Because their brain's worrying about catching the ball. And by the way, catching the ball is not part of the serve. You don't have to worry about catching the ball. We want to worry about this, which is actually the part of the serve you want, which is ball in the throat of the racket, elbow back, strings are down, tip of the racket pointing over. So you're going to want to film yourself doing this. You're going to want to see, can you go tip of the racket over, hands nice and close, continental grip, feet closer, down, toss, and get into this position. This is the position you got to get into. Before you even go to the birthday hat concept, you got to do that a hundred times. Then we can start to incorporate the birthday hat position. All right, let's do it. So this is kind of my signature move, my signature way of teaching the serve is you got to go out and get a birthday hat. There are many different drills that coaches use that, that uh, will help their students improve their serve. But the drill tends to be, do the drill, and then after you do the drill, let's tr see if it affects the actual serve. About five, six, seven years ago, I'm not sure exactly when it happened, uh, I was teaching a young group of kids, and I was explaining to them that, I was explaining to them the service motion, and I was explaining that unicorns can't serve correctly. And I explained to them, if I just take this off, I explained to them that the racket would run into their horn. And they, they laughed and they thought it was funny. And, and the idea was when the racket comes up, it shouldn't be coming back here. The unicorn horn, the racket would actually hit the horn. You look at Monfils, you look at Federer, you look at Djokovic, you look at Sam Groth, right? <laughs> you, you look at Isner, the racket passes in over the head. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to figure out a way for them to actually practice this. So I thought, hey, let's get some birthday hats. Next best thing to the unicorn. And you just, from here, learn to knock off a birthday hat. Unlike most drills where you go out and practice the drill and then hit some serves, this actually gives you instant feedback to whether or not you knock the birthday hat off. Because if you knock it off, right, if you hit it, you did it correctly. So what you want is to learn from this position, elbow back, strings are down, tip of the racket over, toss first, toss, then knock off the birthday hat. And you're, again, I always suggest this to people and they'll say things like, oh, well, I'll, I'll just imagine I'm using a birthday hat because they're embarrassed or whatever. No, no, go out and get a birthday hat. I'm telling you, and you'll get conversations. People are like, what the heck are you doing? Be like, hey, I'm working on my serve. Tip of the racket to the right of your target. You make sure that the knuckle and heel pad are on bevel number two. 
tip of the racket to the right of the target rather than out here, which forces you to have the wrong grip, and then you have to fix it back here. Hands are nice and close, feet are close. You're gonna go across your feet and make this move. You gotta make sure that you get into this position so that you can knock off the birthday hat. What you are missing on your serve, Andy, is racket speed. You're not gonna be able to create the racket speed you want going this direction because this is not a throwing motion. Getting the elbow back and then having a far distance that the elbow has to come forward in a short amount of time is gonna force your racket to speed up. You saw when your racket finally did come around, it was on edge, it was awesome, but the racket was on the inside of your hand. You saw my serve, my racket was slightly to the outside of my hand. I mean, John Isner's like way over here just because of how fast he can serve. This is not the problem where the racket's to the inside of your hand, where mine was to the outside. What you need is a faster move. And you're gonna get that faster move from this position, from the elbow back, knocking off the birthday hat and making this move. Now, I do wanna address your toss because with this faster motion, your toss is quite high. I, when we uh, had the side-by-side, -side, I showed you how little time it took once the ball left my hand for me to hit the serve. Now, I'm quite a quick server. Uh, think of um, like Delgopolov, right? And so I kind of have that rhythm uh, to my serve. You, on the other hand, I was done with my serve. Like, done. <laughs> I was probably playing the next ball, and you were just making contact with the ball. So I'm gonna ask you to lower your toss because if we're gonna quicken everything and we're gonna give you racket speed, I don't want that toss up there where you're making this move and you're learning to bring the elbow from the strings pointing down, you're learning to knock off the birthday hat, the elbow's back, it comes around, and now there's no ball for you to hit. So I definitely want you to work on lowering your toss. You can even compare it to the amount of time you have in your current video that you have and see if you can actually hit the ball sooner out of your hand. You might even feel like you're hitting the ball, right, like almost right out of your hand. Like that's gonna be the feeling you want when you're practicing this. From there, everything looked really good. You were tucking your left arm against your body, which was awesome. You were falling into the court and you were falling forward. I loved how your toss was to the right of your head. You got a lot going on from here on that is really good but it's gonna be important that we actually get these three or four things from the right grip to the starting position to getting here, strings pointing down, elbow back, tip of the racket pointing over. And I'm telling you, the birthday hat, <laughs> this is absolutely essential. You don't wanna make this investment in this video private lesson with me and then not go out and get a birthday hat. This is, this is the it's, it's, the, it's the key, it, it's everything. So you're gonna hit serves and you're gonna knock off the birthday hat. Thank you so much, Andy. I really appreciate you trusting me to help you with your serve. If you found value in this video lesson, it would make, mean the world to me and my family if you were to share this video with somebody. Share it with somebody who's struggling with their serve. Let them know about this concept of 2minutetennis.net video private lessons. Uh, word of mouth advertising is my oxygen, so it's how, I, it's how I survive. So thank you so much, Andy. Please send me subsequent videos, either by email or direct message on Instagram so I can see your progression. People send me videos all the time, people I've worked with in the past, and I just throw them a few sentences of what I'm seeing. And so I wanna give you that continued education and let you know, hey, um, hey, the, the toss is looking lower, great job. Don't forget to you know, um, show me a video where you're knocking off the birthday hat, something like that. I just wanna be able to help you through this process. So Andy, thank you so much, and I'll talk to you really soon.